Good morning, everyone. Today is another episode of Arcs Trash, which is my podcast, which means today's episode is audio only. However, I have prepared some B-roll for my visual listeners out there. This time, the B-roll is a little bit different. It does have my webcam turned on because it is footage from while I was live streaming. So hopefully that doesn't bother you. If it does, let me know in the comment section below. And for the next episode or the future episodes of Arcs Trash, I will make sure to just like, you know, remove the webcam so that you just see regular B-roll. Um, but I think most people should be okay with it, but uh, let me know anyway. But today's special guest is Chrono Catastrophe, and we talk a lot about the Kavaris region, the new Ancients, as well as, of course, the new 7-star weapons. Today's episode is a little bit long because there was just so much to talk about. But before we jump into the video, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Arcs Trash. Today, I have special guest Chrono Catastrophe with me. Chrono, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, so I've been on here a couple of times now, but for those who don't know me, I'm Chrono. I primarily stream PSO2 as well as make PSO2 content over on YouTube. Um, that's mostly it. All right, perfect. So um, today's topic is, of course, going to be about the Kavars update, about Ancients, about the new 7-star rarity weapons. We're going to be talking about all of these things, but, um, you know, let's start from the basics. Let's start from uh, what do you think about the Kavars update itself? So I've actually been asked this question quite a bit when it comes to Kavars directly. Um, even now, kind of holds still true. Kavars got a lot of, uh, how do I say this? We got a lot of updates that we needed, like a lot of quality of life changes and small system changes. The game realistically is mostly still along the same lines for the most part. Um, like we still kind of are still out in the open world. We're still farming, you know, combat zones and things of that sort. You're still gathering things. You're still vet farming. That's all those things are still pretty much standard, but things like the weapon progression system is a little bit different. You have upgrades that are a bit different as well. So like, you know, smaller like quality of life things. Uh, I'm trying to think of something else. What is it? Um, class bonus or class updates, new skills and things like that. All of those things have been added into the game that feel really great, but they don't fundamentally change the way we play the game just yet, which I know a lot of people are looking for. So while I like a lot of this stuff, um, game's still not super different. So yeah, some good, some bad. Yeah, I agree. Um, obviously I'm a little bit more uh, hyped because I do like the Kavars region a lot and I do like the uh, the snowy regions you know it just feels a lot nicer it feels a lot more lively compared to Ritem which was just a desert but I do agree that the majority of the changes were actually like under the hood right it was a lot of these quality right. of life changes a lot of these small system changes which made the game a lot more manageable compared to before when we only had Ritam and Alio. And something that I've noticed that a lot of people aren't doing and will probably regret soon down the line is they're not collecting their minerals and their foods from the other regions. They're only focused on Kavars and they're very tunnel visioned on it. And when they're blasting through everything in Kavars, they're just like, yo, there's nothing else to do. Only to realize that, hey, Remember those 20 Blizzardiums that you want to exchange for? You need 200 of each mineral for, you know, <laughs> every single week. That's at least exactly. two days of full rotations. So a lot of people are forgetting about the other regions and that they exist. And um, oh, Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. It actually brings up a very interesting topic. Um, there was a question for the developers saying that, hey, since we have so many regions now, gathering materials and gathering minerals and stuff is taking forever is there any uh anything that you guys could do you know is there anything they can do to fix that and the developers actually said look forward to the next ngs headline this was actually just posted like a couple hours ago at the time of this recording on the uh on the oh, discord okay. and so i'm kind of interested in seeing do you think we'll get auxiliaries back because that's what it, collected all the materials for us in the base game, right? Yeah, some way of uh, some way of gathering stuff without having to go out and gather. It'd be interesting to see. I'd be really excited to see auxiliaries come back. 
uh, especially in NGS, uh, having more of a play in how we go with things. Um, and man, yeah, I don't know, it's, I'm kind of with you in the hype of like liking the newer zone because of the way that it looks primarily. Like I, I, I'm kind of in a weird spot because I go back and gather, but I don't like running through big desert zone because giant red, boring desert, not really fun of that. Um, but I is not too bad and I'm enjoying what, uh, what Kavaris looks like as far as aesthetics go. So I know I haven't been the best at collecting, though I have thought about going back to collect more often because like watching other people like I know Skulls, she grabs everything from every region and it's just like it doesn't register in my brain to do the same thing. So I know I haven't been doing that as well. So yeah, it's definitely going to be kind of a rude awakening, especially to people who haven't even unlocked the uh, the exchange shop. So that should be interesting. Actually, speaking about the exchange shop, this is a hot topic. What do you think about the requirements for unlocking the shop? You know, of course, we have to talk about the equalizers because that is the <laughs> uh, that's the hot topic. What's your take yeah, on the it? great the great equalizer? Um, so I think there's not a problem with having quests that are needed to unlock the exchange shop, but there shouldn't be an RNG step. And funny enough, actually, I think it, my video should be out before this comes out probably about this but um, I talk about it in a video that's coming out relatively soon that when you have something like an RNG step included in this process like having to get equalizers and there's really no guaranteed way to do this you have great outliers for some people where some people will get these equalizers in like maybe 30 minutes of trying the process out the same or another person could do the exact same method and not see equalizers for upwards of like four or five, six hours. And when you have that mix between the two, it just it feels really bad because it there's really no bad luck protection. You just you just have bad luck and you hope for the best, but it may not always work in your favor. Mm -hmm. Yep, I totally agree. I was thinking that in the future, because I don't think they're going to change this, right? They're not going to hotfix this. But in the mm -hmm. future quests, if they have, um, you know, more NPCs with exchange shops, which uh, need unlocking, I think they should do it where it's just a, a large amount of enemies killed or something, right? Instead of having kill three equalizers, it's like kill a thousand enemies in the gorge area or kill a thousand enemies in XYZ area. And I think that yeah. would be a lot more manageable because people would be like, okay, you know, at least I see the progression, right? I kill 10 enemies, I see the little ticker, it's 10 out of a thousand or 10 out of whatever. And then exactly. people, you know, it just feels a lot better to progress that way instead of just sitting there at the mercy of RNG going like, wow, these, these enemies don't spawn. <laughs> well, my biggest, uh, I would say like my biggest gripe with that system or so far with the process of unlocking was, I mean, of course the equalizers, yes, but also the fact that it's kind of disconnected from the new content, like the new area, right? Like we've got these ancients, we have this whole new zone, but we're not going there to do the unlock for the exchange quest. So like, I would like to see if they're going to do something like this in the future, have them be specific enemies in the gorge, like kill, you know, the, a certain boss enemy that spawns in there, or just kill the two ancients that spawn there, one of each. Um, granted, that is still RNG, right? Like, because you're not always going to get the same one. But it would be nice to see something that has us interacting with that because it feels kind of separated. Where I've been very big on trying to go unlock this uh, this shop, that way I could get some proper testing going. It's had me not farm any ancients whatsoever. Like, I haven't been in that zone very much, and I haven't killed a whole bunch of ancients like a lot of the people have. And if they have been killing ancients, they haven't gone to unlock this shop, which I feel like having the two separated just seems kind of silly. Yeah. I agree. I, I think that, you know, if you're unlocking a shop that has, you know, something to do related with the gorge, right? Because their freaking Resso's mm -hmm. title is like the freaking preparation manager of the gorge. It just exactly. it just doesn't make much sense that she's giving you quests to go to Lost Central or to uh, freaking the runes, you know? It should be like, yo, go to the gorge, kill a bunch of enemies there, or kill the ancients, or kill veterans, or something, right? You need to, it needs to be related with the new content. I agree with that. That makes a lot of sense. And I found out the hard way that if you die at the same time as your enemy dying, it doesn't count for your quest completion. Wait, you mean my the ult. equalizer? No, my uh, killing um, veterans actually. I was on my alt on ship three, who's not as strong. So he gets like one shot by veterans. 
and I got killed by a veteran right before it died, and I didn't get res until after it died, and it didn't count for my quest. Oh, like, oh no. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> GG. My goodness. Yep. Okay, so well, next up I want to talk about the Ancients themselves, of course. So, how many Ancients have you killed? Have you done a couple? Oh uh, yeah, I've killed a few Ancients. Uh, I actually killed about like five or six of them. Had enough to essentially kind of like, you know, try fighting them to see how they are. Um, they're pretty fun. I mean, realistically, Ancients are not really much more than souped up veterans. Um, they're basically vets with the power scaling of a Gigantics. And I know some people aren't super, you know, excited to fight you know, giant bosses or gigantics or vets aren't really very different. It's not like going up against, you know, Dark Falls that we got in, uh, in during the Redham time frame, but in the Ilio region. However, it is two bosses that I do like a lot. It's Frostal, which is a fun fight for me personally, because he has that moment where he's just doing a bunch of damage in a giant circle. We can step counter over and over again. I thought that was super fun. And then it's Ams, which just reminds me of a boss from base game, uh, Hunar. So it's they're both really, really cool fights. They definitely chose the two fights to, uh, or the two bosses, the two best bosses, in my opinion, to use for the Ancients. And uh, the rewards are pretty sick. So I think it's pretty fun. Yeah, I agree to an extent. The rewards, I, I don't agree on the rewards being sick because, um, well, I I've killed maybe 30 of them so far. And I haven't seen anything other than D Cold Standard 2 and the Ice Cube. That, that is it. Those are the only items I've ever seen. I've killed, you know, 30-ish. And so I'm wondering, you know, what on earth is the drop rate? And what on earth is the drop table, right? Like, I'm thinking, does do the bosses just drop these two items and then have like a 0.01% of dropping like a 7-star? And is that it? Right. So my reasoning behind actually kind of liking those fights or, or the drops themselves are they're directly tied into building up towards the weapons we're trying to make, right? So you've got the decolds that if you stack up decolds, you actually can go towards making decold might um, or the decold stats, which are useful if you don't want to use the armor sets that they have available. And there's also like the icicle stuff, which you trade those in to get towards your new weapon, right? So it gets saying that the rewards are sick is kind of like a bit of an overstatement. It's more that they're relevant to what you're trying to get accomplished. So it kind of builds into what I was talking about beforehand, where we're doing the new piece of content and that is giving us items that we're going to need towards getting the new weapon, which is what I feel like it should always be instead of like kind of disconnected or something weird like that. It just kind of works out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that that makes sense. You know, it kind of gives me um, Divide Quest vibes. Do you remember mm -hmm. when we had to farm Divide Quest for the Mitra modules and all the different modules in order to make our, uh, I think, the, the, the Klaus weapons or Klaus armors? Yeah. And, you know, it kind of gives me that type of vibe where it's like, oh, yeah, you're just going to be farming this, but you're guaranteed at least one or two drops or whatever. And you're just going to be running this over and over and over. And um, yeah, pretty much the same vibe. Yeah. But something that I liked about the base game was there was like a weekly bonus. Remember, like the first time in the week, if you did it, you were guaranteed like, you know, a substantial amount. I think you were given like three instead of just like the rng chance of one before so that was nice yeah but um yeah I don't, I don't know i don't know how i feel about the ancients right now because of the crazy low drop rate yeah it's it's a bit of a weird spot right because i i'm trying to figure out really what the mindset was behind making them the way they are like again the decolds and the uh the icicles are definitely useful I even mentioned this in you know in that video I was talking about that over time the requirement towards getting those new weapons isn't going to seem nearly as much because you're just going to passively farm a bunch of these things anyway so it's not going to really matter as much but early on it's kind of a lot to farm out um, it's mostly just trying to figure out what the whole mindset is because like this is the first iteration right these are the first two ancients that we have where is this going to go um, are we going to see more weapons drop? Are we going to see new weapons we have to trade in for? Are these going to be a stepping stone towards another weapon? Who knows? But I would like to see, overall, I would have liked to see a higher rate or higher, uh, I guess it's, it's kind of RNG, right? Because we can't really tell. I don't know what the actual drop rate is on at very least the six stars that are coming from there. Like, it'd be nice to see Rock's weapons show up a lot more often. You know, something that I would like to see implemented in the future 
is something to do with the actual region where the ancient spawns. Because right now it's like you go in, you kill your ancient, and then you room hop. I think that seems to be the more popular method of a lot of people just room hopping in mm. order to get the ancients to spawn faster or get more kills, I guess. But what I'm thinking is I think the ancient spawn rate should be tied with something to do with the region. So for example, let's say that uh, after you kill the ancient, it has like a set timer, like 15 minutes, right? Just like veterans and stuff. And maybe it's a mm -hmm. visible timer that you can actually see. But if you go out to the gorge area and you do trials or you kill mobs and stuff, it lowers the timer. Like, so that way you can stay in a room and everyone's actually actively working together to kill all the random stuff in the gorge. Because right now, everyone's just beelining straight to the ancient. You beeline to yeah. the ancient, you AFK in the room, you wait for the ancient to spawn and you kill it. And yeah, sure, you know, that that is a gameplay loop. But it's kind of boring, especially for streamers, right? When I'm streaming myself killing ancients, I find that part excruciatingly painful because I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, bro, this isn't entertaining content, you know? I'm just talking to the chat, but you, I want them to see something. I want to kill stuff. I want to do something. And I would just like to see that, hey, if you kill a bunch of things in the gorge and if you're doing trials in the gorge, the timer goes down faster, so there's a huge incentive for people to just stay in one MPA and just kill everything. And uh, you know, that there, that way there's a, I don't know, I feel like the, the gameplay loop would feel a lot more smoother that way. Oh no, I agree. I think there definitely should be some form of incentive to sit down and just fight enemies in the gorge. Because I feel like the area is just not being utilized to its full potential. Um, it's cool that we have ancients, I like fighting them. And it's funny because I'm a little bit of the opposite side when it comes to like streaming content. The, the best streams I had and the best times I've ever had streaming a lot of this content was whenever we just waited around for stuff. Um, it was like not a ton of like action all the time, but it was like very dense sections of fighting bosses and then just chilling and talking with chat. We'd have like you know conversations about anime and so on and so forth. So it's a little bit reversed for me personally. However, I do agree. It'd be much better if there was like something to do out in the gorge. I feel like there's this giant space that we have that's virtually wasted, right? Like, we we don't know. There could be really good drops out there in the gorge, but we're not farming them because there's no reason to sit there and kill those enemies, right? They're basically just there, and their best use at the moment is, hey, look, if you want to gain some EXP to get X cubes, they're high enough level to keep giving you good experience, but that's really about it, which, I don't know, it feels kind of wasted. Mm -hmm. I agree. I have a hot take here that I want to see implemented, and that is uh, when you go to a Ryukur device, I want all of my flowers to be restocked, my potions and my revives. I want it to just, when you teleport to a Ryukur, maybe you could buy it off the Ryukur for free or restock or whatever, but you know, ideally, I want it to be automatic. I just teleport to a Ryukur, boom, I'm fully restocked with potions and fully restocked with, uh, with the rest of the flowers or the revive flowers and then I can just go off to battle because it, it doesn't make sense right now, right? You, you you finish your ancient, you teleport to a cocoon, you refill, and then you come back. It's the same thing. I don't get it. Yeah, uh, I'd say even an even hotter take. I feel like if you're outside of combat, you pick up one of the uh, flowers or one of the reverse signs, it should be maxed out. Just done. Like, honestly, there's. I mean, if you want to tag on like a Masetta sync to it, sure. That's fine, we can do that from the Ryuka device, but there's so many methods of just picking them up that's just tedious. Like, I teleport back to town just to buy them because it's like one button click and I move on with my life. There's just no reason for me to make it that much more complicated, like it doesn't need to be. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I feel like the, the whole flower thing was a great idea, but especially in the gorge, it's such a pain in the ass. Because in the gorge, there's like no flower, um, there's no revive flowers. There's a bunch of regular healing ones, but if you want to find the reviving ones, there's like three and I'm just like, wow, OK. <laughs> yeah, there's it, there's a very big uh, missing gap of things that lead up to bosses in NGS. Like, again, the ancients themselves, I actually like those fights. They're super cool. But like there's nothing in between, right? Like there's no interesting fight that leads up to it to start with. It's not like we show up there and we kill a few trials that have like smaller bosses that spawn the ancients and spawn the the, uh, the cube and things like that. And it's just like, I mean, I mentioned beforehand that, that huge wasted space that really nothing is happening in. 
it definitely could be used to uh, some greater degree. And maybe they have the idea of using it, right? Like maybe it exists, but we just don't know yet, right? Like there's not a lot of information about it. They're not telling us. So hopefully they're doing something with that. We'll have to see how that goes. Yep, for sure. So uh, earlier you mentioned about the event shop, about Reso shop, you know, about those capsules and stuff like that. Um, obviously, I need to touch on the new Kaisar weapons or the new craftable seven star rarity weapons. What's your take on that? On the shop or the weapons? The weapons. So the weapons themselves are a bit of a weird spot because they are mostly what I expected them to be um, with a bit of an asterisk. So they, the Kaiser weapons are awesome that we can build up towards a weapon, right? Like it's obviously a fairly powerful weapon, but we also do have the looming threat of like, you know, the rugged weapon, the weapon that's technically a bit stronger and in some cases a lot stronger um, than some of the other Kaiser weapons. And uh, it's a bit of a weird spot because they all have the same potential, the Kaiser weapons. So the balancing between them seems pretty good. But that's only if you're only looking at the Kaiser weapons. If you actually look at the rugged weapons along with it, um, for example, the rugged sword, I think has a potency of plus 25%. Like, it's massive. Comparatively to 17% on all of the Kaiser weapons, absolutely insane. And I mean, like, granted, of course, its potency isn't super fantastic, right? Like, it generates, um, it generates barriers and it has a cooldown of two seconds per enemy that you kill. But technically, this is like, it, it, honestly, it's a super tanky weapon that has a huge amount of damage comparatively to... You know something like a kaiser weapon or one of the other rugged weapons right so the rugged blade for example the soaring blades have the follow-up attack occurs three times whenever you hit an enemy that also sounds kind of insane um comparatively to of course the kaiser weapon which just has critical hit rate plus and pp consumption minus and the photon or photon blast gauge charging uh, all fantastic effects but it's gonna be it's in a weird spot where like i'm excited to work towards a rugged i'm not rugged i'm excited to work towards a kaiser but there's that looming threat of the rugged if it shows up like do i sell it do i use it like a good part of me wants it <laughs> like I, I want the weapon but ugh, 300 mil 500 mil towards a weapon itself it's kind of crazy you know yeah for sure like um I i'm definitely in the same boat i'm kind of conflicted between the two weapons so i personally i don't really want to make a kaiser weapon like even if i had the materials and everything I don't really want it. I kind of lean towards the rugged weapon series because just from the potency alone, right? When when you get that potential, you know, the rugged weapons for all of the rugged weapons is actually plus 25 uh, potency versus uh, the the Kaiser, which is only plus 17. So just from that alone and then the flat damage, of course, I just feel like, yo, the rugged weapons are just superior overall. And then on top of that, you've got all the different special potencies, right? Uh, potentials, I mean. So, like, the katana has the minus 30% PP consumption, which is pretty nuts. And there's only a 10 second cooldown and a 20 second duration of how long it lasts. So it's like, it's really, really powerful. And like, as you said, with the sword, getting that triple shield at 40% damage reduction against freaking ancients that's amazing you you basically you can't die to an ancient because you're taking 40 percent reduced damage for three hits so you could take so much damage without without any fear of death versus the kaiser weapons where it's like you have that 10 percent crit rate which is nice but it doesn't equate to anything because um i don't know if you've seen the news recently but when you upgrade your rocks weapon into a kaiser weapon your fixes and your augments don't transfer over. It's not like base. They actually mm -hmm. made an official post about this on the website. I was like, holy crap. That's yep. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a, it's part of the thing, right? And so it does look like a large number of the, the rugged weapons are the 25%. Some of them aren't. Like the rugged blade, um, I think the rugged spear. Yeah, the, the wire lance. Some of them have a different effect like the katana looks like you guys have um you guys have the 25 percent but the uh, rug like some of the rugged weapons have just three follow-up attacks on every attack they have with a five second cooldown oh so their potency is actually only nine 19 percent as opposed to the 25. yeah 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 um, actually so... I, I was talking to a talus user i think that had that and they were saying that the the triple attack is insane because they're yeah. basically just dealing like the regular auto attack but three times every five seconds. 
So I'm just like, right. what the hell? That's crazy. <laughs> yep. So like, that's really cool for some weapons, right? So what's happening here in this case, and this is something I feel like in a lot, and this happens in a lot of games, right? I know sometimes people get really like upset, like, you know, games take steps forward and then new ones take a step back and they end up changing it later. This feels a lot like when base PSO2 released the, uh, I think it's the first 15 star weapon they released that you could craft. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the series of weapons. I'm going to have to pull it up in a moment. But essentially the way that it worked out was that the the dropped 14 stars were still the strongest iterations of weapons you can get a hold of. They were the best versions. However, there were these new 15 stars that you could craft them. And for a lot of weapons, they weren't the best, but they were still very good. Um, so you would remove the RNG by crafting them. However, it would like, you know, there's still the looming threat of if this other weapon dropped, it was still the better choice for you to use overall. It was the Atlas weapon, excuse me, and it started at 14 star and then they upgraded to 15 star. Yeah, so Atlas, Atlas weapons, weapons into Atlas EX, right? I remember that. Right. So the original Atlas weapons, um, they released and you could craft them and they were good, but they weren't better than the actual unique potential 14 stars, which were very, very strong. Um, eventually upgrading them into 15 stars. Now, the thing is, is I feel like that's gonna, this is gonna go the same route where these Kaiser weapons, we can craft them, but then I feel like in the future, they're also going to upgrade. The problem is, is what you mentioned beforehand, right? They're base. They don't transfer anything over. They don't transfer any fixes. They don't transfer any augments. They don't transfer any color change. And the biggest thing that's really like, that's a real big pain in the neck right now. It's not gonna be that bad later on is they don't transfer any multi-weapon. So a lot of classes that I want to say they rely on their multi-weapon, but have really good combination of multi-weapon com or really good combinations of multi-weapons can't use them initially. They have to use one weapon and then get another one to then multi-weapon. But then there's also a looming threat if this upgrades again that they'd lose out on the multi-weapon a second time. Um, that's why like, I think this is like the precursor to them working on a somewhat of a new system and they want everyone to have a clean slate. It kind of reminds me of how this entire region started, where this region started out what felt like mostly a clean slate. We got access to basically free weapons that were drastically stronger than what we had beforehand. We had access to very easy to get units that were stronger than what we had beforehand, almost like a gear reset. And now we've got this crafted weapon that seems like it's even getting its own reset to start from very base. Like all of that kind of leans, in my opinion, towards them trying to start somewhat of a new system to build up with over time. The problem is, is like I mentioned beforehand, we don't know. <laughs> like they haven't told us anything. We don't know how that's going to work out. We don't know what, you know, what that's going to mean. And at this point, I'm just making assumptions i can't say for certain that's even going to be the case i have a prediction which actually is going to be today's video and that is um do you think that the other six star rarity weapons are also going to be upgradable to seven star rarity like the chattel weapons as well as the evil eclipse weapons what's your take on that uh i don't think that they're going to be upgradable i think this kaiser weapon is going to upgrade again i think before this region's over this kaiser weapon is going to upgrade to an eight star and people are going to care less about the rugged weapens. I, that's what's going to end up happening. Um, I think the potential for the rugged weapons are going to be good. They'll be okay. But we're going to take this Kaiser weapon and we're going to upgrade it again. And I think what's going to happen is this time around, everything's going to transfer over to the next weapon. Um, I just don't... I mean, granted, it, this is just me making an assumption based on what they've done beforehand. But they they repeat themselves in a lot of situations. And this is exactly what happened with Atlas EX. Minus the whole, you know, keeping your augments and everything. It's just... I feel like they're going to do that moving forward because one thing I will give them credit for, uh, Sega does miss the mark sometimes, but they do hear when people cry out. So moving forward, they do usually tend to make the better decision afterwards. It's just the initial choice is not always there. Well, I have a really different take from you. I think that the uh, Chattel weapons are going to be upgradable. I think that we will get a more inexpensive version to upgrade the Chattel weapon from a 6 star to a 7 star. The potential as well as the damage might not be as crazy as the Kaiser weapon. It's probably going to be worse than the Kaiser weapon, but it's going to be the cheaper alternative for the more casual players in order to get to a 7 star weapon as a placeholder. Because I feel like the way that NGS is designed, it's always being catered towards casual players in the end. For the mm -hmm. first initial week or two, they do release something crazy strong, right? And it's just like, all right, here you go, hardcore players, go chase this, you know, go, go have fun. 
But after that, they always do introduce like an alternative for the casual players to be like, hey, you know, we, we know you only play like, you know, uh, five hours a week. For you guys, you got this weapon series, which you can work towards pretty easily or even for free through like an event or something. And that's why I think that the Chattel series are going to be able to upgrade to a seven star. And, you know, your, your potential as well as your potency isn't going to be insane. It's going to be good enough because, you know, you've seen the jump from a six star to a seven star just from the flat damage alone. It's a big oh, deal, yeah. right? It's insane how much more damage you're getting out of those two weapons. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. So I wouldn't be surprised that when Dark Falls comes out, that there's going to be some alternative so that the casual player or like the more, uh, you know, the player that doesn't have as much time to commit into the game has a way to have a fighting chance against Dark Falls. Because I think Dark Falls, it's going to be, first of all, you've got 20 minutes to kill it, right? The rank two version. Yeah. And then you can only die five times as a team. So I think the main bottleneck is going to be the dying part. I think that's going to be the most difficult part. A lot of people are just going to die five times and fail the mission. But yeah, on sure. top of that, you need the damage as well. And I feel like if you have a seven star weapon versus a six star weapon, you have a huge advantage because of just the sheer amount of damage you're dealing, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think you're going to be well, well ahead for sure. Um, I mean, I don't know what they'll choose to do with like the whole upgrade system process. Um, I know we kind of talked about it or you touched on it a little bit, but you know, I don't think they're going to really go back and change anything. Um, I think it's in their best interest to to change how that exchange shop works, but I think it's going to leave a, a sour taste in a few people's mouths because they're losing out on their weapon, right? Um, like the, the process of, I don't know, it's just, it just seems like a very weird choice to not have things transfer over when you upgrade a weapon. So I feel like they have a very deliberate um, upgrade path that they have in mind that they just in in proper PSO2 fashion, just hasn't released the entire process to us to actually properly understand yet. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. It'd be interesting to see the Shadell weapons upgrade into something. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. Like thinking about it, it does matter a lot for Dark Falls rank two, because that DPS check could be pretty rough, especially without seven stars. Like I saw some people talking about, you know, look at how strong these seven stars are comparatively to the six stars and comparatively to the five stars. Obviously, things aren't balanced around the luxury seven star. They're balanced more around the six star, which I disagree. If they give us the ability, the ability to upgrade into a seven star, like through, you know, through a non RNG basis, something we can work towards. I feel like they're going to balance a lot of stuff around that seven star eventually, like battle power is going to start to get up there. And then, of course, damage necessary is going to start to get up there as well where maybe some players will be able to push past it with a six star, the average player is probably going to need a seven star to get there to keep up with the damage that they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. You know, something that I found really interesting was how quickly we brushed off six stars. Like when Rattan was introduced, we went from four star to five star for like a good six months. And mm -hmm. the moment Kavaros was introduced, we brushed off six stars on day two. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as we found out seven stars existed. Right. Um, I think that's kind of par for the course, though, because one thing that um, PSO2 does is like its interaction with 10 stars. You remember from base game, we had X cubes, right? It X cubes became a very common source of resources for a lot of things. Not only did it they have its own entire shop that was used for augmentation, but it also ha was used for just general money source. It made running certain urgent quests just worth their time to run because you would get so many X cubes that you would make money off of running the urgent quest anyway. Um, not everyone knew, knew that or understood that, but a lot of players did. And for those of us who did, we played just to get the X cubes because you would say, turn them into grinders and then just vendor them, make tons of cash. So I feel like what's happening is they're trying to push themselves into that 10 star, 11 star, 12 star range to bring back this whole process because we're in the third region and we just hit seven stars. Like we were at what four stars for one entire region and we were just stuck that that was our strongest. I feel like by the time we're finished with Kavaris, we're going to be at eight stars, if not looking at nine stars going into the next region afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair, fair. I just find it a little bit weird, you know, I, I just felt like it kind of defeated the entire purpose of six stars to me. Like they, they had mm -hmm. these six star weapons, they had some interesting uh, potentials, and then 
no one cares about them anymore. They, it got brushed off, you know? Your Chattel series is great for mobbing, it's great for killing stuff in PSE Burst, blah blah blah. Nobody cares about them. You've got the yeah. freaking Evil Eclipse weapon. Everyone's treating it as a placeholder. It's like, okay, this is just what I'm going to be using until I get a 7-star weapon. Then you've got the Rock series, where people are just like, oh, this is the best 6-star weapon that you can get, but the drop rate's abysmally low. And um, even if I do have one, I don't want to spend too much money on my augments because now I know none of these augments carry over and uh, I don't even care if it happens a fixa anymore because that doesn't carry over either. It's just kind of like, exactly. what is the six star rarity weapons for? It just feels like th these are all just, oh yeah, this, this is a placeholder. This is just for you to, you know, carry you this month. That's it. Yeah, it's it's a weird spot to be in for sure. I think the biggest problem is the fact that like your rocks weapon, you're just not going to invest in it at all. Like you don't care if it's out of fixa. You don't care if it's upgraded. The only thing you want to do is plus 50 that thing and then set it aside because you're going to use it to upgrade into a Kaiser weapon later. I think the point of the six stars are just yeah, the, the Evil Eclipse was the placeholder. I think it was necessary for it to be that simple to get a hold of, to be the placeholder, to just kind of crush our five-star weapons. I know some people still use their five-star weapons, but like if I'm looking at them now, what I'm going to use a lot of these six stars for are just playing other classes. Like I'm not going to go through the process of making Kaiser weapons immediately to play anything else. It's for people that play them more than one class. Um, Evil Eclipse or Shell or the Shell weapons or the Rocks weapons. Those are going to be useful for those situations to an extent, as long as the drop weights are okay. Um, especially since their variance is still 75 to 100, where the Kaiser and the Rugged weapons are definitely going to need some good augmentation because their variance is 50% to 100. Um, so it's going to be much more difficult to use those as like our main weapons, as opposed to the Shell, the Evil Eclipse, and the Rock series. Yeah. Speaking about the variance, what do you think about that? What? What? Why do you think the design choice was to make it 50 to 100%? I think it's because we're still getting stronger. Um, like I was showing a few friends on stream, the our variance uh, was already like if you had the best in slot setup for your augmentations, you were at a 98% variance. Um, it was insanely high. It was almost 100%. Like you were almost just flat, you know, just good to go. So with augmentations getting stronger, I feel like that was the only route they were going to go in that situation. Either that or just make it so variance is unnecessary like i figured either you'd always be 75 to 100 or eventually you would just have a point where you would not you know augment as much variance on any of your gear because you would be maxed out so dropping it to 50 percent does mean that you have to like very specifically augment to use these weapons and it does mean that you know their power spike does make sense but all of this becomes a moot point if they ever bring crit into the game. <laughs> like if crit ever becomes a thing then it's like oh well variance doesn't really matter at all as long as you have high, you have high enough crit chance Mm hmm. So uh, a full crit build has been my dream ever since the game started, right? Because I, I love Braver in the base game and the whole thing about Braver was about getting those big fat critical strikes. And so mm -hmm. with the introduction of the Kaiser weapon, you know, it had 10% crit rate on it. So I was just thinking like, okay, you know, maybe they do want to make a crit build possible. But the problem right now is we have no augments that give us crit. And now that we know that the Kaiser weapons can't inherit any of the fixes, that 10% crit is useless. Because you get the 10% crit, you can't even get a fix of a Tal 3 to get the additional 10%. So there's, you know, there's nothing there. And yeah. so there, you know, it's just a flat 10%. You have no other ways to get critical chance. And so I don't fully understand, like, are we going to be getting new capsules or new augments soon? that give us crit rate or like what's the deal right i see that's kind of why i have the mindset that i do with the the way they chose to bring, bring up these kaiser weapons right this is like crazy tinfoil hat i don't want to say hot take situation but like i really feel like the idea of a fix a capsule isn't far off like straight up i feel like that's something that's going to exist in the near future because they have created now, multiple situations where there are weapons that can exist that absolutely cannot get a fixa. We have the Evil Eclipse weapons that can only get fixa attack one. That is all they can do. And now we've got these Kaiser weapons that don't get fixes whatsoever. They're, they, they, they love this whole fixa idea. They've been doing it so long. It's either going to be that they just drop it or they give us a way to get a hold of them. And I feel like the fixa capsule idea is the way that they're going to do this, either through some form of an exchange shop 
or we're going to be able to build up towards it or upgrade the same way you upgrade, you know, the, poten the um, potential on your weapon itself. Like, I feel like it's not that far off because, yeah, we've got 10% crit chance. Like, how useful is that when you can't get any more or get any more crit damage? Um, unless they plan on releasing skills in the next region that's going to give us crit chance. Like, 10% is nothing. Like, we need at least 60 before you really think about most things. All right, so speaking about the Kaiser weapons, I need to bring up its cost. The exchange cost is kind of expensive, but people already have their Kaiser weapons, and it's literally been out for, like, two days. So, uh, what are your thoughts on the cost itself? Like, the amount of materials we need to make a Kaiser weapon? I don't think it's expensive in the slightest. I feel like it's actually too cheap. Um, the craziest thing about the Kaiser weapons, the most expensive portion of getting a Kaiser weapon, in my opinion, at the very least, is unlocking the shop. Um, it's, it's the worst part of this entire process. Um, as far as getting the weapons themselves, if these are weapons that we're going to be using for a good chunk of time, people are getting them in like two days. I think the fastest player that got a hold of this was 26 hours when the servers came up. Um, and that's kind of crazy to think about when you're looking at a weapon that's probably going to be the weapon you'll use for a few months if not you know three four months possible if they don't release anything else like this is it for a long period of time so the fact that they're so cheap it's kind of crazy interesting interesting i i have a different take but then again you know i i do represent the more casual players i feel like it's very daunting in the beginning when you see that cost and you're just like wow it cost 150 blizzardium and you're just like, wait a second, I can collect one a day, I might get some from the treasure shop, I can get 20 a week from the from Resto shop. You know, it, it seems really restrictive in the beginning when you first initially have the information that we had when it when the shop was first released. And then you find out, oh, there's a 3% chance whenever you break the gold boxes that it might drop Blizzardium. And so, you know, you're just kind of like, well, do I spend the time and just keep farming these gold boxes for this 3% drop rate? Or do I just wait and just, you know, collect my one a day, buy the treasure shop stuff whenever it pops up, and then collect my 20 every single week? Because if you only do that, that still takes, like, you know, it takes a substantial amount of time, at least a month to a month and a half before you can get your weapon. Well, I mean, if you do keep in mind what is at the exchange shop itself, we've got 20 Blizzardium that you can pick up in there, right? And then you have Blizzardium you get every every day. And on top of that, the standard, if you're just casually farming, you're going to come across those gold boxes that have Blizzardium in them as well, um, as well as the uh, trials themselves. I feel like the idea of players getting them would be closer to like maybe two, three weeks if you're not really like completely focused on it, right? On top of that, there's also the, the treasure shop, um, and that's not to say that they will, you know, ham-fist Blizzardium into something else as well. Like, imagine it shows up as a Urgent Quest reward, too, for the next Urgent Quest that pops up. Um, maybe it pops up in Dark Falls Rank 2. Like, who knows where all the places that it can show up, kind of similar to how Photon um, Photon Scales showed up in, you know, the, uh, the purple triggers. And um, they showed up in the event stuff as well. Like, I feel like there's a lot of places to get it, but... It is, I guess, a bit daunting to see how many Blizzardium you realistically need without going through the other farming methods. But the fact that their farming methods are exist and they work so well, like, I mean, I was just checking out Cheeto's stream the other day and they farmed for a few hours, maybe like, I want to say they had been live for maybe four hours or something like that. Maybe two, three hours of dedicated to farming. And they had like 70 Blizzardium, like already. That's like, and it's not like it's a difficult farm. It's like, hey, look, swap around a, a password a couple of times. Look for one, t like one trial. And the trial is just break a bunch of boxes and you're good to go. It's not a hard farm. I think you'll still get it. It'll still pop up quite a bit, even if you're just farming combat zones to the point where it'll show up. But all that being said, I can see how it'd be very daunting, especially with the Blizzardium situation, thinking you can only get one a day. Not everyone has the mindset of, hey, I should look up how I can get more of these because we only could get like what five uh, photon scales beforehand <laughs> so like it's it's definitely a daunting process but i do think it is very 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 weighted towards getting a hold of them quickly if you know how to get a hold of them quickly which i think it's a little too quick i think there should be something put in place for it to be not as fast 
Um, cause I, in my mindset, I just keep thinking back to like, you know, we were, you know, building up our claws weapons. We were building up our, um, our Atlas weapons. We were getting a hold of our, uh, basically all of the, all of the exchange weapons that we made through all of base game. Like when those weapons came out realistically, we were spending maybe about a week to two weeks getting a hold of them at first. Yeah. I, I remember that. Um, but before we jump into that, I want to talk about the whole Blizzardium situation. I think that a lot of people are panicking because, you know, Blizzardium is really, really rare right now. It's really difficult to get a hold of. Well, I mean, for the casual, for the average player, all right? For the average player, it's pretty yeah, difficult yeah, to get sure. a hold of. Um, obviously, there are ways to do it, but it's not, quote unquote, fun. You know, you, it doesn't seem natural the way that you get it. It's like remaking yeah. rooms over and over. I know this is like a you know, a PSO type of thing. It's always been like, if you want rare items, you just remake rooms over and over. It seems to be like the tradition, but mm. for the average player that has not played PSO and you just come into this series, this, you know, NGS is your first MMO or your first uh, uh, fantasy star type MMO. And you're just like, wait a second, well, why, what is this? It doesn't feel natural, at least for me, because I'm used to just running combat zones or running, uh, you know, staying in the same room or MPA and just running something over and over and over. That's kind of like my mentality or like uh, like a divide quest type of thing where it's like, OK, this is your run. And then you do it over and over and over. Um, you know, you could make the argument that that's kind of the same thing as making it remaking a room, I guess. But it just doesn't feel natural to me. And that's why yeah. I bring it up so much. But I think that we haven't given up uh given the game enough time like the moment that dark falls get uh, introduced the moment we get ranked two versions of the urgent quest i think blizzardium is just going to drop like candy and people are just going to be like oh wow i've got like 900 blizzardium now what right right it's going to be one of those things where we we've done this for so long that it's going to be available to us so easily we're not really going to care like i mentioned beforehand like kaiser weapons right now it seems so steep but after you get your first one, you're not going to pay so much attention to the resources needed to get a hold of them. If you want to make a second one, it's just going to be a, a process of, oh, I just have the stuff to make another one, right? Like, it's just going to be there. At that point, the only thing that will matter is getting the rocks weapon to use as the basis for making your, your Kaiser weapon. So the Blizzardium isn't that big of a deal, but I do think there are going to be other way, methods of getting a hold of them. However, I can also sympathize with people that are like, you know, it's not fun to remake a room. Because I'll be honest, I don't think that was the intention. Um, they brought password rooms into NGS. I don't think they brought them with the intention of being able to just flip them over and over again for us to be able to you know, use them to our advantage to farm things, right? Like captain farms um, or equalizer farms. Like That was never really the intention originally for password rooms, I don't think. Um, I think that's just a clever way the player base is using that system. And we're using it to our advantage because, I mean, most of the time, I'm not sure like if, if you had the same experience in games you've played, most of the time, the players come up with ways of doing things that the dev team just never thought about, um, like in any way, shape or form that the dev team just really didn't see as a possibility. And the players like, yeah, let's do this. And it's just it's very, very straightforward to us. And it seems like it's new. It's like a night and day difference, <laughs> but they never even considered it because I mean, I don't know about you. I don't ever remember seeing those yellow boxes say anything about being able to drop Blizzardium. I, I never I never even noticed until I did get one. And I was just like, oh, cool. It drops Blizzardium, whatever. But like, it never crossed my mind that I was just like, wait a second, <laughs> I need these. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think there is something, there's like a method, or not a method, but there's like something to be said about the whole, like, you know, going into a zone and farming, right? Like, imagine if the best way to get Blizzardium was that it's a rare chance off of enemies that you're killing in the gorge. That would make perfect sense to me because it would have us in that area, in the new zone, doing the new thing. That's like, it again, it, it kind of wraps all back around to that same mindset of like, we have the zone, do something with it like we had divide quests come out when we were in base game we were getting a hold of these materials and like a new version of divide quest came out meaning new drops and new bosses so we did that because the new drops were there and the new bosses were there but there was also new stuff that we wanted to collect to get new gear it was all inclusive in that one spot it made it like okay this is the thing to do right like we're all gonna get together and we're gonna do this thing because it's a new cool thing to do this whole blizzardium farm it's totally separate of fighting the ancients. Like it's separated completely. Um, it's to the point where I think they're doing it in 32 man zones now. Yep. In uh, South Kavaris, you can do the uh, the gold box farm over there, and it's actually faster than doing it in Beluga Runes. So yeah. Exactly, and it's it's really good. It gets it done very quickly. But like, 
here's the problem starts when what happens when everyone's already farmed all their blizzardium now the next player comes around what are they going to do not everyone's farming blizzardium with them they kind of like have to farm it the slower way and that becomes the problem where it's totally fine now because the whole player base needs to farm it but eventually the streamers are going to stop doing it we're not we're not going to like you know run these these blizzardium farms because we don't need blizzardium anymore we're going to start just killing veterans and we're going to start killing ancients again and someone who isn't super dedicated to playing the very first week because of how fast this blizzardium farm happens they're gonna fall behind and it's not really their fault because of the way that it's designed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep i i agree i feel like um you know to to go full circle back to your original idea of base pso2 with the atlas weapons and like taking weeks to make each weapon i think we need more baby steps in between like more pit stops before making a super powerful weapon so for example let's say that you know our eight star rarity weapons or something you requires like three oh no let, let's use seven stars something more relatable let's say that we get something similar to the kaiser weapon but in order to make it you need your evil eclipse weapon you need your chatel weapon and you need your rocks weapon all at plus 50 and then you combine all three in order to get a weapon that is maybe even stronger than the Rugged series, you know, something along those lines. And that way it gives people the drive to be like, okay, I need to work towards this. And maybe even on top of that, have your augments and your fixes transfer over to the new weapon. Because that way you have a lot of pit stops, right? So it's like, okay, I've made my evil eclipse. I'm, I'm using it for now. Oh, I just got a Chattel weapon to drop. Uh, that's a minor upgrade. I can use that now. Oh, I got the Rocks weapon to drop. Boom, that's another small upgrade. And then once that's all done, combine it together with, you know, Blizzardium or whatever materials I need. And bam, I finally get the final product. That was something that was very difficult in the base game, right? We had to get like a freaking, uh, what was it called? Like the occult weapons and like all these other random weapons. Uh, yeah, the, for Atlas weapons, yeah, it was like Lumiere and uh, you needed like the base weapon, like the 13 star and stuff like that. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, so we had... But because of that, we had a lot of different pit stops where it didn't feel like, oh, it was just one huge jump to like a, you know, like how we have with six star and seven star right now. It's just a huge jump, right? You're just going from six star. This is like, you know, 500 damage at most to suddenly 700 damage. at That's freaking seven star. It's just kind of like, wait, what the hell? What happened here? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, I feel like jump in power. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's it's just I, too jarring i think yeah i, I think it, it would be better overall um to have like it, it, it's a kind of a combination of two things i think i think that would be really good to have because it would provide a very specific player or a very specific progression for the player where they know okay i can go into this weapon i can move into this weapon like the process is like kind of like linear right where it's okay to have different options like to be able to jump past certain things but to have like an actual progression where you can tell a player like hey look you know, you're at this point of the game, you want to grab this because you know you're going to use this for the future of this. And then you can move forward. Like I can use um, the Atlas as an example. The Atlas required two weapons to make the uh, the actual Atlas weapon. It required a Val, which was the base version of it. And it required a Lumiere weapon, which was another weapon you could make based on um, some of the later portions of that actual episode of episode five. You could take your Val weapon and you could use it and you could upgrade it completely and set it up. Or you could get a hold of a Val weapon and you can use the Lumiere weapon and you can use that weapon and you know work towards it itself. It was actually Judas made Lumiere and you would take those two weapons and you would combine them into making your Atlas weapon, your 14 star, you know, the really good weapon that you needed um, to, uh, to upgrade. But like you had something to use as you were going along, right? Like you used your base version of this weapon and then you upgraded into the new weapon. Right now, there's really not much of that. If you're going into Kavaris, like it's, it's very easy for me to tell personally because I, uh, I I just leveled a character, you know, from start to finish over on uh, ship three. The the progression of weapons doesn't really exist. Like you just don't pay attention as hardcore. And it's probably part of why they released or they're doing the campaign they're doing right now, where they gave you a bunch of three star weapons that are basically resurger weapons, but blue and red or blue and white instead of being black and uh, black and orange, where these weapons just had extreme amounts of battle power attached to them. And a good chunk of uh, of damage because it would just help you skip a bunch of things um i basically my weapon progression on that new character was 
these this campaign into just picking up a relic off of the market fairly cheap and i'm already at kavaris like i'm done with kavaris at level 52 53 or something like that and gonna go towards making like you know my kavaris specific weapon at some point i just kind of skipped around because there really isn't a progression path that makes a lot of sense like nothing that you use is going to really carry over and if we could have something carry over that would be pretty dope so do you think that this is a deliberate design thing because they're like yo listen we've already planned up to 15 stars so everything below 10 stars is just going to be fodder and that's why people are you know that's why the design's just like yo you upgrade to this nothing carries over nothing carries over because it quote unquote creates content as people need to farm more and you know buys the developers more time do you think this is a you know on purpose or do you think this is just an oversight i think the kaiser weapons are a deliberate choice I think it's moving towards something different with fixes. I think they were moving into a different system of being able to upgrade things. Um, but the problem is, is that it's really easy for that to be just seen as an oversight and can be changed. So it's hard to call one versus the other. I, I think like with everything we've heard of fixes, um, with everything we've heard of like upgrade paths and things of that sort, it would make sense for them to force a clean slate on people. Um, that means that, you know, People aren't trying to hoard rocks weapons with like high fixes or anything along those lines. They're not trying to get a hold of old weapons with high fixes and kind of just messing with the market a little bit. It's everyone is equal across the board. There's nothing else that can be changed, right? So it feels deliberate, but I can very easily see that just they, it was an oversight. Like they were like, oh, well, it's not going to matter anyway. Let's just make a trade in. It just seems like a very odd oversight to have when they are very aware of how important the fixes are, because I mean, look, look at the evil eclipse. There was no option of getting attack, um, fatal or termina. It was just attack because even they've noticed that attack is just the best one that we have available to us. That's the only one people are going to pick. So they're obviously aware of them, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, tough call. Yeah, true, true, true. So you've been mentioning this whole fix a capsule idea for quite some time on the pod. So I want to bring up the, uh, you know, we, we've had some rumors going around that apparently fixes are going to go up to level 10. What's your take on that? I think the only way that that would work is if there is some form of capsule. <laughs> like, I, I don't I don't foresee fixes going up to level 10 and people being happy about them if it's still RNG based. Uh, I think it's just it's going to create a situation where maybe more fixes will drop, like fixes will drop more commonly and then there'll be higher levels of them, but it's just going to clutter the overall like system, right? Because right now we have like an auto sell system, but if fix a ones to fix a fives become virtually, you know, whatever, like no one cares about them, then the auto sell feature that we currently have that turns off or turns on the ability to sell items without fixes just doesn't really become useful to us overall. Granted, I know that's not the best uh, reason for that being the case behind why we should have fixes versus not having fixes, but when you're going up 10 levels of possibilities, it just it seems silly to me that they wouldn't have something else put in place to kind of give you a proper progression through that that process. I feel like the fix a capsule situation, it's I don't know, man, I feel like it's going to be either. It, I don't know if fix a capsule is the right word for it, but like maybe the building of fixes over time, because I mean, we have this the system put in place right to uh, to upgrade potentials. Why wouldn't it also work with fixes? I feel like that's something that could definitely be a thing yeah i'm thinking so so i have two different takes here for the fix a we're just going to call it the fix a cap, capsule system because you've dubbed it that but oh yes do you think that we're gonna need to collect other weapons with with fixes on them and like break it down in order to get materials to craft the capsule itself or do you think it's just going to be like an item that just drops or like you know or whatever What's your take? I think they're gonna they're gonna throw it into materials again. I think it's just gonna cost materials to upgrade it. And I think they're gonna put those materials in things like urgent quests or or um, exchange shops that have to do with like events and things like that. Um, I think it's possible they have us like break down fixes and stuff like that. But I feel I fear if they do that, they're going to destroy the market. It's going to break very quickly, very fast early on, while people rush to gra gravitate to the market and then just crush everything that has a fix on it. Um, there's just gonna be like this mass um this mass exodus of everything that has to do with fix on the market they're just going to grab and they're going to snap it in half to get all of the juicy fix uh, uh, material from it to be able to build up new ones 
So uh, it'd be interesting to see if that's what they do, but I feel like you know, they have all these materials in place. They have the ability to just use monotite, trinite, and all this other stuff that they could just do something very similar to what they're doing with Blizzardium. Um, have it use all of them. Or even better, you mentioned like the possibility of, uh, what was it, of um, auxiliaries coming back. Maybe they gather a specific thing from their missions every time they complete them that goes towards that. That would be interesting. That would be interesting. So that, that idea I would lean a little bit against because you're time gating yourself, right? That's something that I yeah. really don't want in, in NGS uh, is time gating because NGS, you know, it, they took a lot of inspiration from Genshin Impact, which is great. You know, I like Genshin Impact a lot, but the one thing I don't like about Genshin Impact is it's a mobile game. It's normal for it to be time gated versus yep. NGS. This is a PC game, right? It will maybe a guest console game as well, but it's not supposed to be time gated. It just it just doesn't feel right to be time gated from that game, um, and so I don't want them to introduce anything that actually time gates you. Like at the beginning, I thought that yo Blizzardium is time gated, we're screwed, but no, you know there was a workaround. There there were ways to farm for it, even though the drop rate was low, but people still managed to do it in 26 hours, and I'm sure like a lot of people will be done with their Kaiser weapon in like two to three weeks, right? So it's not the end of the world. But I'm kind of scared that if they introduce like this whole Fixa system and like in order to get to like, you know, Fixa 7, 8, 9, it takes like months to get, then it would be very, very scary because you'd be like, okay, I invested so much to finally get a Fixa 10 weapon only to realize that like a week later or a month later that my weapon is obsolete because a new rarity comes out, you know? Uh, I would yeah. I would feel very defeated if that happened. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Um, although I also don't think time, all time gating is a terrible thing. And the reason I give that, so it, it, you know, people like I'm sure there's someone who's watching the podcast. It's like, oh my god, cancel him! I hate this. But let me let me bring up an example. So let's take for example Final Fantasy XIV. Um, it has a bit of time gating with its gearing system, where you can only get so much of a certain currency every single week to go in towards your gear. The difference is how the time gating is done. How long does it take for you to get each piece of the gear that you absolutely need? And how much do you have to pay attention to it? Like how much is the FOMO really involved, right? If you're missing out of actually getting the stuff taken care of. Um, for them, it's more like you have dailies and you complete those dailies. If you do them at least four out of your seven days a week, you're pretty solid. You're good to go. You've got everything you can get for the week and you're good. You, know, you can move on to the next week. However, I can also understand where there's a concern, right? Because then you have someone who's coming in later on down the line. They can't get caught up as easily. But the thing that they do in 14 is they reduce that time gate as time goes on. So like where you can only get, let's say, 400 of a specific tome, that becomes, I'm sorry, 450 of a specific tome, that becomes 900 later on in the actual expansion. That way, people who aren't playing as much or haven't played as much are coming in later. They're getting more of the actual item itself. So I feel like not all time gating is a bad thing. It just depends on how it's implemented. Um, but the bigger thing becomes or comes to mind of like how you're also making the player interact with getting a hold of those items. If you have to work like way outside of the norm to get this stuff, then it's an irritation. But if it just kind of mes meshes in with everything we're already doing, say like, for example, if we were to play and farm normally, and we had what we needed to make our, our Kaiser weapons in two weeks because there was a bit of a time gate involved. I don't think that's a big idea, a big, a really bad thing. However, at the same time, if we had to do the same thing, but it took like two months and yeah, now there's a problem because the time gate is way too long. Like it's way too much that we have to work for. So while well, I do agree, it's, it's better not to have time gates overall. I don't think all time gating is a terrible thing as long as it's handled properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I, I get your point of view. I don't agree with it, but I get Fair it. Fair enough. Yeah, no, I, I understand 100%. I, I totally get where people are coming from in that situation. But that's the problem, though, is like, it creates the extreme opposite end. Because then people are like, oh, you can get the Kaiser weapon. Why aren't you farming to get it? Like, what are you doing with yourself? Like, people get pushed into the idea of them being casual because they didn't spend 26 hours farming all the Blizzardium necessary to get a hold of a Kaiser weapon in two days, right? So it's, it also does offer a bit of being, or people being laxed as well. Like you feel like you can also log in, get everything taken care of, and you've done what you need to do. 
it creates um oh, what's the, sen- the, word, the word i'm looking for it creates a sense of completion where you did everything that you're supposed to do and you're done and you've done what you're supposed to get done and you can move on to the next thing like i feel like that's very important for gearing um but i I think it also depends on the player where they feel like that difference should be right for some players they feel like it should be when they get their piece of gear uh for others they feel like it should be when they gather everything they can for the day to get their gear but it just it depends on the two i don't know i'm kind of torn between the two because i've i've worked with both systems and i don't hate either one i getcha yeah i feel like ngs is they're doing an okay job they're kind of in the middle but i would like to see more rewards up front again like you know, I might I might sound pretty contradicting here, but um, the way that NGS is designed right now, the reason why I liked PSO2 to begin with was because it respected the player's time. But with the introduction of the Kaiser weapons and all of these things and the recent changes, it kind of seemed like, oh damn, okay. So uh, if you can't play like a substantial amount of time every single day you probably are not going to be getting a kaiser weapon anytime soon you know you're going to be like the average player and you'll get it in a month or maybe in a month and a half versus the hardcore players which have you know they're going to get it in week one most likely i I, i'm pretty sure most streamers and most of the hardcore players are going to get their kaiser weapon in week one right um and because of this it's really conflicting because on one hand, you're like, Sega's like, okay, we've designed this system, so it's going to give people stuff to do, and they're going to, you know, it's going to keep them busy for a, uh, for a while in order to build up this weapon. And on the other hand, you know, I'm kind of complaining about, yo, this takes too long, blah, 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 and then I finally get it, then I start complaining about there's no content, right? I'm just like, yo, I got my weapon, now there's nothing to do, what, what's what's up? So it's, I'm really torn and conflicted about this because I'm like, okay, I get this system, you know? The system's here to keep us busy, to keep us coming back every day because I'm sure that they have the statistics where it's like, okay, the average player, maybe like 80% of our player base only plays like two hours a day or three hours a day. So, you know, we got this system implemented so it'll keep them busy for a month. But then you've got like the extremes, the hardcore players, the content creators, the streamers, where you are, you know, playing the game like five to eight hours a day. And you're just like, yo, I need things to do. I need to chase things. I need to get the best of the best, blah, blah, blah. And for them, once you get your Kaiser weapon or once you get whatever the new shiny thing is, you're like, oh, now what? And then there's like, yeah, you're done. And then there's like, you know, a month of just nothingness. And you're kind of like, what the hell, Sega? Why can't you add more content? So, ah. you know, I, I get I get both sides, but I don't know how to think about it. Like, I kind of would like my Kaiser weapon ASAP, but it's not as strong as the rugged weapon. And I'm just kind of like, eh, what do I do, <laughs> so, man? <laughs> all right. So, yeah, I can kind of understand from your perspective, like sympathize with, uh, you know, you, you hardcore grind, you get everything finished and you're done. You don't have anything to do. Um, and at the same time, it's also even worse, right? Because you're grinding for a weapon that isn't the best weapon you can possibly get a hold of. So while on my end, I I look at these Kaiser weapons and it's hard for me to think, you know, I want to make this weapon because I know it's not my end all be all. If I happen to make enough money or if I happen to get a drop of the rugged blade I want, I want to use that weapon. Um, I I mean, I know some people there like, you know, what you, you don't really use these things. You sell them to make the money. But realistically, what are you making money for? At the end of the day, it's either you're making it for fashion. If you have the fashion you want, then it's going to go into your gear. So for me, looking at that rugged weapons, like I really want to get a hold of it. I want that strength and I want to show it off. But on the inverse side, we also have a situation where players are going to take too long to make their weapons. And again, that whole idea that it's not the best weapon they can get a hold of stings just even a little bit more in some situations. It's not the end of the world because some people don't care about having the tip, 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 tip top of everything. They just want to have good enough, which is cool. But I feel like if you're going to be farming something, it should be you know pretty close to the best after over time after you've put that time in um but i think that's kind of where we run into a bit of a uh, of a problem and why i feel would like kind of a bit of a shift or a change um I, I always fall back on this a lot of times i feel like but it's kind of the best example it's why divide quest worked so well divide quest had a set of missions you did but the biggest thing were how the rewards were structured yes they work towards making your best in slot gear 
but they also just had other drops that kept you going back to farm again. You could possibly get, you know, camos that would drop from there. You would get uh, materials to go towards other weapons that you could just flat out sell. So it was also some of the best thing to do if you wanted to just casually make money while you were helping your friends get what they needed to get, get accomplished to getting their gear. So everyone had a reason to be there. It was the consistent good thing to do. And it was not super hard to figure out either, right? There was no jumping between rooms or specialized. I mean, there was some of that, yes. People did hold some rooms, but there, you didn't have to go in there with a very specialized rule set or tons of people. You could just jump in and jump out. And it was a very simple process moving forward. I think that's kind of the biggest and the hardest part of this process is that we're kind of like on extreme on either end, right? Either you're farming out ridiculously fast and there's nothing to do, or you take too long to farm it and you feel like your your amount of time you put into it isn't worth it, which is very, very difficult to kind of balance in my opinion. I can definitely agree with that because as a extremely lucky player, you know, when Ritem came out, I did get that Fix of Fatal 4 Relic weapon. And that was like a huge, huge deal for me because I stuck with that weapon even when, you know, Sanquian weapons were introduced, when all these other things were introduced. Even though I knew that the relic was not the best in slot anymore, I knew that, hey, this huge investment that I put into the relic, like all of the augments and everything, was worth it because I was going to get, you know, several months of mileage out of that weapon. And with the Kaiser series or the Rugged series, because we currently only have these two choices, um, I would much rather get a Rugged weapon and invest, you know, 100 million or 80 million or whatever onto that weapon in augments and know that, hey, I'm going to be sticking with this weapon until, you know, an 8-star series weapon comes out or until the next region even possibly. And so, you know, with the current Kaiser weapons, I, I don't feel comfortable investing like 60 million onto that, like putting a Mastery 4 or anything onto that weapon. Because I would be like, oh man, you know, what if a Rugged series dropped, right? Mm -hmm. Because I would know that if a Rugged weapon drops, I would be incentivized to upgrade to it. Even though a lot of players I know would much rather sell it and, you know, get like a hundred million Masetta or whatever. But right. I, I'm i the type of person that would use a weapon. If it dropped for me, I'm like, okay, this is fate. They told me to use this weapon. I'm going to use it now. And that's just, you know, that's just my personality, I guess. It's... I can say, honestly, if a rugged set of blades dropped for me, I'd be very hard pressed to sell that weapon. It'd be really difficult for me to do that. Um, I think I would just augment it and use it and probably just keep it. Granted, you know, that extra two, three hundred mil would be awesome. But like the reason I'd have that extra two, three hundred mil is to get a weapon like the rugged weapon. Um, outside of that, I would just only need enough to be able to satiate what I want for fashion or for what I want to upgrade and things like that, like slowly make money over the course of the actual uh, the I guess the expansion itself is what we can call it. But over the course of Kavaris, like we can make money over that time frame. That's what that amount of money would be for us for that super awesome weapon that I would love to just use and enjoy moving forward. I mean, granted, it doesn't look fantastic. I think the rugged blades look terrible, um, but they have a really, really cool potential. And of course, there's also just like that cool factor of having that really powerful weapon, that really, really rare weapon. And um, I think that it makes perfect sense, right? Like it's easier to invest in something you know is going to be the best. And that's funny thing is, is like, I know you're kind of against it, but that's actually where the benefit to a time gate comes in. A time gate done right means that you can plan out exactly how long it should take for a player to get a hold of something before the next upgrade comes out. So like imagine a time gate of saying, OK, so Kaiser blades are going to take us or Kaiser weapons are going to take us a week to get or two weeks to get. And then we know that the player is going to get this in two weeks. So how long should they physically be able to use this weapon before the next weapon comes out? Like that time frame can come into planning because you know how long it should take someone to get a hold of this, as opposed to like, say, you know, one person gets in, in a week and one person gets in two, like two months. Realistically, what makes sense, right? Because it's so drastically different. It becomes more of a difficult process for the developer to think, okay, well, this person has been waiting around since like, you know, the very first week to use to use a new weapon. They're going to get a hold of this thing super fast. Anyway, we should get them something else. Um, and that becomes part of the problem of balancing where I think that a proper time gate while it can be somewhat annoying in certain circumstances, if you can't work around it to a high extent, 
can actually be very, very useful if done correctly. Okay, I, I think I think I can compromise with with your idea. So you know, you've got the whole time gate thing, but I'm thinking like a time floor, like the maximum yeah. amount of time it would take for a casual player to get X weapon. So for example, the Kaiser weapon, right? The main bottleneck mm -hmm. is of course the Blizzardium. So let's say that if they, you know, they calculated and they said, okay, the average player plays two hours a day. So if you just do your dailies, we're going to give you Blizzardium as a daily bonus. And that way it would take two weeks or three weeks at most for everyone to get their Kaiser weapon. And I feel yeah. like a, a I, I don't know what that's called, like a time floor or time gate or whatever. I feel like that would be a good compromise. So if you're super hardcore, sure, you can get it in like, you know, two days. But if you're a normal player, you will still get it within three weeks, right? Or two weeks or whatever. And if you have that, it's kind of like a safeguard against the extremes. It's kind of like the equalizing enemies, you know? If they made it where it's like, you are guaranteed an equalizing enemy every 30 minutes that you don't, that you don't see one, right? If you're in a room for 30 minutes and you're just farming, you're guaranteed to see one. And then right. people won't be so, you know, there won't be these extremes where people have farmed for five hours and they've never seen an equalizer. It would be like guaranteed one and a half hours, boom, you've got your three kills, you're good to go. Next level, right? I think yeah. something like that would be more, more in line with like how I feel NGS would be or should be. So I think the term you're looking for, I guess it's like kind of a phrase, is a progression path. Like there's a path to getting to the end of what's going to be there, right? So yeah, I guess a time floor is not a bad a bad way of mentioning it. But yeah, I think that honestly would be like in a situation of best case scenario, I think that is absolute best case scenario. Have like a path of what the players should be getting over a course of time and by a certain time frame that, you know, you definitely will get it here. But you can also have those crazy players like myself and other people that are going to like, I'm going to farm for like the next 20 hours and get it right now because I can. Um, so that way those players that want to put in that extra time, right? can absolutely put in that extra time it's actually um oh, what is it uh lost ark does this actually with the first two tiers of their um of uh their progression when you're going through uh, ranking up your gear with their chaos dungeons where you get two a day to do for your dailies but then like if you do any afterwards there's this currency that you get that that currency can be used at a certain um shop vendor to get more materials but of course the currency like it takes a lot more runs to get the same amount of currency to be able to get more materials so like from a time perspective if you want to grind it out it's there but it's not really always worth grinding out like you can but it's a lot of time investment to be able to get a hold of stuff earlier on mm -hmm. yeah i agree um i i have a question what about the rugged series so you know the kaiser series is kind of to combat the rng of the rugged series right it's like, yo, listen, if if you if your RNG sucks and uh, you don't want to deal with RNG, you can work towards the rugged uh, towards the Kaiser series. But with the rugged series being just pure RNG, do you think that is good game design or do you think that they should change something or improve it in some way? So I'm a bit torn in this situation because I while I understand the idea of having an RNG based weapon for the wow factor of while you're farming for that moment that some players get to have when they see something that drops that's super rare, that's super awesome, um, that factor is never going to apply for a large base of the audience. So I don't know if it's worth having a weapon like that exist um, for certain people that are going to get that lucky. However, there's also the, the inverse, right? The situation where this weapon is also just cooler. Um, I don't know if I agree with having such a basic weapon for the trade-in weapon versus the dropped weapon to be, have like have such interesting mechanics. And again, like I feel like it, it's something that keeps throwing back over to base PSO2, but it's like the exact same situation. The Atlas weapons were just boring 14 stars, had very basic potentials and had very basic things you could add to them. And the 14 star weapons, the unique potential 14 stars, were all super interesting that changed your play styles. You had things that like added in an extra attack whenever you'd sway something on knuckles. Soaring blades had like a whole set of pursuit weapons that are pursuit, you know, lightning blades that attacked a target whenever you used a photon art. Um, I don't know if you remember sword, but sword like had a whole on transformation whenever you get a proper parry on it. 
and it had different effects between the two of them. Those are super cool, but then you look at Alice weapons that just had very basic stuff, and that's what you got for trading. And like people looked at it like the Welfare 14 star, and that's what Kaiser weapons kind of feel like. They just have good enough stuff to make them, you know, powerful from like just a uh, a numbers perspective, but they're not interesting. Like you don't have the shields from the sword. You don't have the extra, you know, pursuit unit from the rugged blades. So I, I think it's cool. Like the weapons themselves are cool design, but like, I don't, I don't know if I agree with how they're implemented. Like, and the problem is that like, I don't know how to fix that either. <laughs> like, so it's, it's a situation where it's like, I get it. I like them, but like, I'm also kind of irritated at them for existing in the first place. Cause it just makes me only want to get those and nothing else. Yeah. I, I understand like how you feel because I just want to bring up some statistics, uh, some numbers. I've played in the past two weeks. I've played ninety hours of PSO two nine zero. On average, mm -hmm. that means that I've been playing six point four hours every single day, which is quite a substantial amount of time. Now that I look oh, at it, I'm absolutely. like, holy crap! And out of all of that, I want to say ninety percent of it has been in combat zones. 90% has been in Lost Central combat zones. I've killed almost 50,000 enemies now in that mm. in Lost Central, which is almost as much mobs as I've killed in uh, Retem Al Noth in, in six months. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I've been playing a lot, a lot, a lot. And I have not seen a rugged weapon drop. Like, not myself, not anyone I know. Other than uh, Ship 1, of course, Karim on Ship 1, he managed to get it from an urgent quest really early, and that's how we found out that uh, mm -hmm. Seven Stars was a thing. But other than him, that's it. I, I don't know anyone else that has gotten a Seven Star weapon. And yep. so I'm just sitting here going like, wow, I've played 90 hours in the past two weeks, and I've seen three Rocks weapons drop. Like, personally, for, for me, I've seen three Rock we weapons drop. And I'm just mm -hmm. like... Is this going to be a common thing? Is this going to be the trend? Because I can only think that, yo, the average player is going to be playing one third of the time that I play. And if if I'm only seeing three in 90 hours, that means they're only seeing one in two weeks. Every two weeks, they see one rocks weapon, not even rugged rocks. And it's just kind of like, holy crap, how much do they expect us to farm? before we get these RNG drops. So the thing, the, the idea that I've had for quite some time, and I, I've even mentioned it before in previous uh, podcasts, is I want some sort of token, kind of like what you said about the Chaos Dungeons in uh, Lost Ark. It's like mm -hmm. you you run, you know, you, you go to Lost Central, you grind, you get a chance of getting these rare tokens or something. You use these rare tokens and eventually when you get like, I don't know, 200, 500 of them, you can exchange it for a rugged weapon. And this would tie in with your whole fix a capsule thing. The, rug, uh, mm -hmm. the rugged weapon would not have a fixer on it, but with your whole uh, fix a capsule system, you would be able to work towards having a higher fixer on your rugged weapon eventually over time. And I feel like this way, it's a little bit more, uh, I guess you could say there's a progression path, you know, you could see the progression, you can see the clear progression path on like, listen, I'm not here just blindly sheer, you know, blindly grinding on hopium or copium, you know, at least I can right. see that, hey, I'm working towards something, you know, it's kind of like how you have the Kaiser series right now, where you can see the progression, oh, I just need 900 more of these orbs, oh, I just need, you know, 100 more blizzardium, oh, I just need whatever, you can see the progress, you can feel the progress. I kind of think that maybe the Rugged series shouldn't just be pure RNG and that there should be some sort of progression because as you said, you know, only a very, very small minority of people are going to experience that, oh my god, I got that super rare drop, right? Exactly. And the funny thing about all this is you didn't play JP at all, right? No, I have not. So you don't realize it, but you just exactly described the system they put in place to deal with the RNG from 14 stars. Oh, <laughs> like to the T, the exact system. And this isn't even like planned. Those who played JP will remember that 14 stars originally, they were super rare. 
you like literally never got them like it was it was such an insane chance to get a 14 star and then on top of that to get the one that you actually needed was even crazier because at the time you couldn't sell 14 stars so you had a rare chance of getting them and then in a lot of situations you just didn't get the one that you needed so like it was even worse but eventually they put in a very specific token you'll probably remember back when we played base game there were these things called hero crests do you remember mm, seeing those yep. drop at all yep 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 so hero crests were a part of a system that was put into the game conquerors crests hero crests and all this sort of thing they were are they were tokens that you would do dailies or weeklies or certain campaigns for and they would give you these tokens and over time you could trade them in for those rare weapons that would drop and you would get a hold of them for the exact one that you were looking to get a hold of so there was a system put in place where there was a progression eventually you would get the weapon that you wanted over time so uh, people who remember back in base or in, in base ps2 on jp i never ever 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 got the 14 star um weapon that i wanted to drop it never dropped for me in all the time I played, and I did every single urgent quest I possibly could for it. Never got it to drop. I, however, did get enough of those crests to buy six of them. Holy crap. <laughs> because at the time, it was like a thing where you wanted to use the proper element for each weapon. So I had a whole palette of them. And I got six of them total, which is even funnier because that was back at a time where you'd only get a plus 30 version of it. And you remember how 35 was like the max rank upgrade for our stuff? where you'd have to get duplicates for some weapons. Yeah, it was that situation. So I didn't get just six of them. I actually got six of them plus enough duplicates to put three of them at plus 35. Jesus so Christ. <laughs> I farmed a lot and never got that weapon to drop. So I know a lot about never seeing something. And this was like to the point where it was a meme that people would tag me in our Discord when they got the weapon to drop. Like everyone else was seeing this weapon and i never got it and it was my main weapon that i needed and it was like not even close to it was the point that it was to the point where this weapon was so powerful it beat out certain 15 stars up to a certain point so it it may it was definitely like a make or break for my class at the time jupiter tullus was the name and it was insane um funny enough the new rugged weapon has a very similar potential to what jupiter tullus used to have back then so i wouldn't be surprised if exactly what you described ended up coming about where we just got some form of token that over time we built up and we could just trade indirectly for the weapon. Because to be honest, I don't like it. You're absolutely right. Like you can farm like you're actually even your analogy in the situation. You farm for what? Like you played six hours a day for like two weeks. The average player might play maybe two an hour to two hours. I can tell you right now, part of that's already cut into doing dailies and just general social time. And then on top of that, urgent quests. So like they're missing out on even more time that you didn't because they're not like they're playing in shorter in shorter bursts so the likelihood of them getting something is even lower which is insane yep exactly like uh... <laughs> oh man it's rough it's really really rough when you know I, I really feel like the six star weapons were just too short that their lifespan was literally two days and it was just like poof okay you're gone all right seven stars and then everyone's just chasing the seven stars and it's just like jesus christ <laughs> yeah i mean i don't fully think there was like they were too short i just think they don't have enough staying power overall i feel like having these six stars as our as our alt weapons isn't a bad thing like i feel like because like you have shtel you have evil eclipse and you have rocks It'd be cool if those were the case because it's like our stepping stone to our seven stars and the seven stars being more difficult to make or whatever or use but like everyone's got this sour taste in their mouth about the seven stars right now like if you're going in on a seven star you're going all in like you're you're, you're giving everything you've got for it and it's just it, it, it's it's crazy to me because if you look back in base game like you needed a specific token to even make some of these weapons like trade in so it wasn't even the fact that like you could have multiples of these weapons you could only have one like for your main class and then you would use like a different type of weapon for all classes um i feel like that maybe that that's what they're trying to do with these six stars but yeah i don't know it just it feels like they did jump past them really 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 fast um and it would have been nice to have a bit of time with them but also i'm like my mind is like yo we need, they need to get us up to like 10 stars and 11 stars fairly soon because there's a lot of resources they can use and put in the game that they just can't right now because they've got this mindset tied in that certain things have to be 10 star, certain things have to be 11 star before it's gonna make any sense. All right, so we are running a little bit long on the pod. So uh, before we wrap things up, I've, I've got a couple speculation questions for you. So what okay. do you think 
we're going to be seeing in the NGS headline. And on top of that, what do you think we'll be dropping from the rank two version of Dark Balls? Okay, so what do we see in the NGS headline? Um, it kind of ties together because I think they're going to tell us what we're going to get in the in the Dark Falls thing in the NGS headline. Well, I know. I think the NGS headline doesn't come out soon enough for that, right? That's actually Yeah, we, we get the Dark Falls first. We get Dark Falls yeah. next week. And then after, okay, a right week right. after that, we get NGS headline. Okay, yeah. So then if that's the case, then... <sighs> so Dark Falls, I think it's easy. I think we're getting ranked two versions of our uh, Shvel units. Basically, the... The upgraded versions or the six or the six star versions of the Chevelle units, um, possibly even seven star variants, which would be kind of crazy. Uh, but they might go the route of base game where units don't upgrade nearly as fast as weapons do. So we could be seeing something like that. As far as what we'll see in the headline, so the headline's a tough one because I, I feel like we're gonna see a new urgent quest for sure. But I think we're gonna see more uh, more horizontal stuff or more social based stuff. So I know a big ticket question has been personal quarters, alliance quarters, um, uh, what else, you know, we recently got the races and things like that, but the idea of our old casino, uh, just like, I feel like they're gonna start filling out more of the game um, as opposed to pushing us forward very quickly. So I think that's kind of what we're gonna start to see. I mean, granted, it's kind of like hopium more than anything else um than me like seeing some sort of trend but i don't know i feel like it's just it's a good time for those things to start to exist and then of course we'll see things about summoner because summoner <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough do you think we're ever gonna get a more you know in-depth crafting system of some sort do you think that's that's a possibility I think everything's going to move towards exchange systems. I don't think crafting's really going to be a, a crazy in-depth thing for us. Not like it was back in uh, base PSO2. Um, well, I think it'd be cool. Uh, I think it'd be interesting. Um, it also is, a, I feel like it's also a nightmare to balance. Um, it, so it totally invalidates some weapons or some photon arts without the crafted portions of them. And in some cases, it flat out broke certain weapon combinations. So I don't think they're going to put themselves in a situation where there's already issues with, you know, the progression system currently in the game. They're going to add in something that could possibly mess with the, you know, possibly add in new variables that they're just flat out not going to think of. Like, nothing against the dev team, but, like, they just will not think of certain combinations that players will put together. Even I wouldn't have considered some things that people are like, oh, yeah, this totally works. And they're like, wait, why would you even think that? But also, that's kind of insane. Um, I feel like they won't invite that or invite that situation to themselves. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I, I think it's what you said is sound logic because they want to simplify things, right? If you add mm -hmm. in a crafting system, then it's like, do I sell this weapon? Do I salvage this weapon? Blah, blah, blah. And it just it just brings, it complicates, overcomplicates the game. So I do agree that exchange is going to be the new crafting, basically. So if you want these capsules, you use your different ores or your different foods or whatever, and you can exchange it for specific capsules that you can use, blah, blah, blah. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think it'd be comfortable for the average player. And I think it also allows them to uh, to set themselves up with a timetable. I feel like that's something that a lot of games don't really do for themselves. It's really important is decide how long should it take for XYZ to happen and then how long should that continue to be available to the player. Um, I feel like there's a lot to be gathered from just those two metrics to really make a gratifying experience for the player overall. Mm -hmm. And the next last question I have for you is, do you think we're going to be getting rank two urgent quest anytime soon? Mm -hmm. Well, we already got rank one and rank two zones for the uh, combat zones, which I think were really good. Um, I think we'll see rank two urgent quests when we see the level five bump or the five level bump up that they're going to do. Cause they already mentioned that they're going to still do the standard bump us up five levels every once in a while so i think when we see that bump we'll see the five. i think like i think realistically what we're going to see is we're going to see one more urgent quest mm, well no maybe two it's kind of a tough call right so we're definitely going to see another um another mining defense uh now this is again a bit of hopium but i think we're going to see the first iteration of a different like totally different venue to our mining quest more like it might be underground or possibly like in certain areas or whatever like i feel like that's going to be a different thing or have like some sort of new uh new sort of system to it like you know how this time around 
or the last two we had the uh, the turrets. Maybe it'll be the introduction of like a new vehicle since we have new vehicles in this region. Um, so I feel like that's gonna be what's gonna pop up. But I feel like we're gonna get like another boss, and then we're going to get like the big boss, which is like similar to how we got Dark Falls earlier. And then they'll rank two you know, with level up boosts and things like that. Yeah, fair, fair. The thing that I'm most excited for in the headline is going to be the roadmap. We should see the new roadmap, right? Oh, yeah. Again, I feel like that's a bit of hopium um, because sometimes they like to hold back that roadmap. I'm not sure why games do that. But yes, I would love to see the new roadmap to see how things are going to be going on. I know a lot of uh, Gunblade players really want to hear when their class even has the chance of showing up again, since Summoner is very much on the table for a lot of people. They... Um, you know, obviously they're now in a place where they can do this. When are we going to see that other class? All right. Well, that's going to wrap up today's podcast. So I'm going to hand the floor over to you, Chrono, in case you want to do your shout outs, socials, whatever. Floor's yours. Cool. I appreciate it. Well, it's uh, first off, thank you again for having me. This is always a super fun time to have these conversations. Usually it's an aha moment of I didn't think of that. And now I will moving forward. So it's super helpful. But uh, as far as my socials, you guys can find me over on twitch.tv slash chronocatastrophe, as well as youtube.com slash chronocatastrophe. And uh, Twitter is at Zen Chronos. Unfortunately, I don't have enough space to put my entire name, but we'll work that one out. All right, perfect. Well, all of Chronos socials are going to be in the description below. So feel free to just click and subscribe and follow, etc. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. And that concludes today's episode of Ark's Trash. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.